Extended fasting is all the rage as of late. You may have seen this viral video from Dana White, the founder and president of the UFC. And since then, there's been a lot of people that are new to fasting that are doing these three or four day fasts. And, you know, I admire anyone that can go without food for an extended period of time. I've done many four to five day fasts over the course of my life and have experienced many benefits from that. But in today's session, I want to share with you why it's probably more important to focus on exercise in comparison to extended fasting. Now, here's why. Because it turns out that people who regularly exercise get more benefits from an autophagy initiation standpoint and all the markers of longevity when they, when they fast. And so it seems that fasting helps people who regularly exercise more compared to people who don't exercise. And so I encourage people to focus on exercise and then periodically do 24 or 36 hour fast, not just jump in and do these big, long extended fasts. Most of the body composition changes that I've seen in people who do that, it ebbs and flows. And so they might lose a little weight, they might get some inertia, some momentum, and then a year later, they're still round in the face, have a belly and the whole thing. So I think it's important to focus on fitness first, then periodically sprinkle in some 24 or 36 hour fast. Now here's why turns out there's evidence to support what I'm trying to say here. Uh, one study titled uh, Training State and Skeletal Muscle Autophagy in Response to 36 Hours of Fasting. This was published in the Journal of Applied Physiology back in, I think it was 2016. And essentially what they looked at is markers of autophagy initiation protein. Autophagy is the intracellular cleanup process that many people are aspiring to upregulate when they do extended fasting. And as you can see from these different figures, there is a significant increase in markers of autophagy initiation protein, such as AMPK, and there's this Uclin A, there's all these different proteins that initiate autophagy. In trained people, they are orders of magnitude higher 36 hours after having no food compared to people who don't exercise. So again, if you wanna get the most mileage from extended fasting, you need to have a foundation of physical fitness. Sure, can you get benefits after or going for five days without food? Yeah, there's probably, you feel good, you have adrenaline running, noradrenaline, ketones are high, you feel like you have a lot of willpower and all that, but you might catabolize skeletal muscle. And so this can contribute to long-term suppression of resting energy expenditure, metabolic rate, and, and all that. So I just want to continue on with this, but first just say thank you for being here. If you're enjoying the content, hit that like button. Be sure to share this video with a friend or family member, and the articles that we're talking about today will be linked below. Also, since you're considering exercising more, you might want to be aware of the novel creatine containing electrolyte sticks by Myoscience. We now have an unflavored version with zero stevia, zero monk fruit, zero natural flavors that has 2.6 grams of creatine from the Crea Pure material. This is the only non-Chinese derived creatine. It's uh, made in Germany, very clean, very pure. Uh, these novel creatine containing electrolyte sticks also feature Redmond real salts, magnesium, taurine, as well as potassium and higher levels that are found in compared to competitor products that are very popular. And the salt source is real salt. So save using the code podcast over at myoscience.com. Okay, so back to exercise. Why is this so important? Well, as I mentioned, uh, there are numerous studies finding that regular exercisers have orders of magnitude higher levels of autophagy compared to people who don't exercise. And really, when we think about fasting, what are we trying to do? Well, we're trying to lower glucose and insulin, but we know that 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 fasting is one of the best ways or one of the many, there's many ways to increase autophagy. It's a great way to increase this intracellular cleanup process that naturally goes down as we get older. And that's why people get diseases like dementia, Huntington's disease, uh, cognitive impairment from deranged proteins in the brain and throughout the body, uh, may be linked with also cancer and much more. So if we're trying to increase this uh, utopian physiologic process known as autophagy, then we should focus on the science. And the science really shows that exercise is one of the best ways to stimulate autophagy. And so I think, again, when trying to, personalize this for your lifestyle, uh, focus on training three to five days per week, uh, mixed training, high intensity interval training with a base of weight training, periodic zone two training, some intervals, all of that is great. And if you want to start fasting, I would recommend a 24 or 36 hour fast uh, consistently, like on a Monday. We called it Metabolic Monday, started this in 2018. A lot of people were doing this. You have your last meal on Sunday night, your dinner with your family, and you just don't eat any food on Monday. Okay, and you just resume to normal eating starting Tuesday. You can still exercise on, on that Monday, go for a walk, or I like to lift weights in the morning. That way I still have you know kind of liver glycogen, muscle glycogen from the evening meal before, have a good training session, and then just don't eat for the rest of the day. Um, in my opinion, the consistency of doing 
a 24 or 36 hour fast is more important than just randomly haphazardly doing a five day fast. Again, if you want to do that, that's cool. A lot of people start off the year with a long prolonged fast, but I think being more consistent with 24 or 36 hour fast or even doing early time restricted feeding. Uh, there was this study that was published in June of 2018 titled early time restricted feeding improves 24 hour glucose levels and affects markers of circadian clock aging and autophagy in humans, finding that uh, just good old fashioned 16, eight early time restricted eating, eating between the hours of eight and 4 p.m. is sufficient to increase autophagy and markers of longevity, uh, decreasing insulin-like growth factor one, uh, improving brain-derived neurotrophic factor, uh, improving all these longevity-associated genes like sirtuins and all that. So these extreme five-day fasts, fine, but honestly, it's unsustainable. That's just the bottom line. And, and I like to promote practices and lifestyle endeavors that are that are sustainable, that you can do routinely. Um, just like a random marathon is good, but you know most people can't sustain that. They start to get hip issues, knee issues, low back issues, right? So it's better to probably do uh, three, three to five mile runs more consistently than just do one marathon once a year, you know? Um, so that's the way that I look at prolonged fasting now. Uh, again, not saying that it's not good to train for a marathon. or not saying it's not good to aspire to do a five-day fast, but I think the, the consistency, it's it's more sustainable in terms of lifestyle change. And you see the, uh, uh, the consistency really matters when it comes to fasting as well as exercise or reading or relationships. Consistency throughout life matters. So strive for a one 24 or 36 hour fast per week and daily early time restricted feeding. That's where in terms of evidence-based lifestyle change, the evidence really suggests that that is helpful. So I wanted to share, share this information with you because since Dana White did that video, I've seen so many other people who follow him saying, I've done my five day fast. I'm feeling amazing. I'm doing great. And so I, I see a lot of re renowned momentum and interest in prolonged fasting. And um, I think a lot of people don't even know as crazy as it sounds, I know a lot of you know about early time restricted feeding or uh, weekly 36 hour fast, but most people are just brand new to this. And so um, a lot of benefits there. So one last thing, uh, there's a lot of concern about, well, will this break my fast or will having uh, monk fruit or a uh, little bit of cream in my coffee break my fast? Uh, I think if it's under 50 to 60 calories, I'm not really terribly worried about that. If you're fasting for an entire day, you have a little cream in your coffee or some uh, just a small amount of monk fruit or something, probably not that big of a deal, uh, especially if you're exercising. Because again, that journal, uh, the article in the Journal of Physiology, uh, again, titled Training State and Skeletal Muscle Autophagy in Response to 36 hours of fasting found uh, in athletes, there's significant increases in markers of autophagy and autophagy initiation proteins in people who regularly exercise. And so exercise is a wonderful fasting mimetic. You know, it mimics all of the things that we get from fasting. Uh, so last but not least, exercise is one of the best ways to kickstart your fast uh, because it turns out that when you exercise, you lower your blood glucose, you lower insulin, you also increase glucagon. And that's actually the uh, repertoire or the recipe needed to start to release fats from your adipose tissue. And that's what we're trying to do when we fast. So going for a brisk walk first thing in the morning could be a great way to help to kickstart your daily fast, my friend. So what do you think? What are your thoughts? I would love to know how you've benefited from both exercise or fasting. Let me know in the comment section below. As always, if you benefited from this information, please hit that like button, share this with a friend who may also benefit, and we'll catch you in a future video down the road.